Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel today for another video on Gran Turismo 7. We're catching up with possibly the best experience I have ever had on Gran Turismo and probably one of my best ever performances as well. So this was a manufacturer's race on Saturday at Spa in Group 3 and it was a fairly long race. It had changeable conditions, variable weather and it was really, really interesting. Now in slot 1, qualifying was fairly wet. It didn't really dry out completely and it was a bit of a strange one because the track we didn't really understand how the weather was going to work in qualifying to the race now we figured this out after but during slot one you can see here we're going into it i think i qualified p7 or around about p7 with a fairly average lap because the track was still quite wet during qualifying so you can see here this was the grid now this came as a surprise as we're lining up on the grid i think everyone in this lobby now was in oh my god we have messed up because at this stage it was raining and most of us i think believed that it was going to be a dry track because the end of qualifying was dry and we thought it progressed like that so it just carried on the progression however that's not the case what happens in qualifying so you all know for future races is whatever your qualifying weather is it starts exactly the same for the race so it literally imitates the exact same weather pattern now not many people knew this in qualifying you can see i'm starting on p7 and you're going to see straight away i'm on racing mediums and i thought i really hope that i'm not the only person to do this because look at the weather we've got a lot of rain all around us and this is going to be a disaster so first thing i did was put traction control 2 on because i thought if we just keep the car on the track we might gain some positions and straight away we see that we're not the only person because this is hilarious we have Straight away in front of us, what a beetle, losing control, that's Jones off, Jonesy off, and then we got Medi spinning in the Corvette, absolute chaos kicking off in front of us, and God knows what happened behind us, because we were at the front of the grid, so yeah, probably more mayhem going on behind us, we got Nico R behind us there, pushing quite aggressively, quite risky, I mean I thought that maybe he's on the intermediates, because he's really going for it, I'm just taking it easy, I decided that we're on medium tyres. This is not the conditions to be driving aggressive. And this was just hilarious because so many, you're going to see so many drivers now tiptoeing around the track. And this is what I cannot wait for with Gran Turismo, with conditions like this where it happens during a race. And this, this situation could happen midway. You know, a massive downpour in the race. It could be absolutely insane. You can see now, clearly, the majority of people are on the dry tyres. However, Consa there... He obviously knew what the weather pattern was. He's on the intermediates. Pro I think Consta was the only driver who put uh, intermediates on us. We see more chaos going on in front of us here. People missing their braking. Nico going off the track. And this is chaos, but so much fun at the same time. I think this was one of the most entertaining starts to a, a race I've ever been in. It was so much fun. And I do have to say, this really does make me excited for more future races with these dynamic conditions in GT7. Obviously, we know the, how it does it now but maybe they'll change it up and make it a bit more variable. But this was just amazing. I know that um, we should have a weather report at the start. But we, the reason they don't do it is because it follows the qualifying weather pattern, but they didn't let us know this as we see Kalsa going off in front of us there. So at the moment we're in P5 and you can see I am taking this super careful. I'm taking no risks at all in this race because I do not want to crash. I'm just trying to keep it on the track. You know, this is a top split race with very, very high points available. So... I'm taking it super easy here now. Now, Calster was on the hard tyres at this stage, and you can see the extra grip that I have over him. So the medium tyres just giving a little bit more grip, a little bit more confidence in the braking, and I'm able to get myself up to P4. So now we've got Nico in front of us and Bray. Nico's going to go for a move on Bray, and this is, again, you can see, it's just so, it's like almost slow motion racing. But just look how far in the lead that Consta has managed to get himself. Now, look at that track map. That is Consta on the intermediate tyres, and he is He's so far ahead that, you know, he's in a very good position in this race now. So, again, through here, we're going to take it super easy. You can see lifting off the throttle, braking a little bit. I do not want to run wide, just like the two in front of us do, because then you're going to have a little bit of um, dirt on the tyres and stuff like that. They're going to be very tricky to drive. And again, in the braking zone, I brake super early, because, again, I don't want to risk braking late. And both the two drivers in front of us brake extremely in it. Now, I made a huge mistake at this point, because I looked at the weather report, and I thought... There's rain at the top, but we didn't really understand the weather pattern. And there was dry weather, and I decided to pit here for intermediates because I just saw all the chaos going on. I thought, we're going to have to pit. However, that was probably the wrong choice because the pit lane loss here was 
absolutely huge. I do hope that they can make some sort of change to the pit lane loss based on the length of the race because it would make being on the right tyre in these conditions the better way to do it, which is probably more how you should do it. But because of the huge pit lane loss, um, we come out and we obviously lose quite a bit of places. However, we're now on intermediates. There's drivers around us on the soft tyres, uh, medium tyres, sorry. And they're going to have to be extremely careful on off-track grip because anywhere offline, you're going to be aquaplaning. So this, again, is going to be a case of can we manage to catch them off. We weren't the overdrive, only driver to pit there. Quite a few other drivers decided to go in the pits and change onto intermediates as well. But you can also see that a lot of drivers decided to stay out. Now we've got Bray, I think, going around the left-hand side of us there. It's not showing on the info there, but that is Bray in front of us. It's not Aura. I think the I think the Delta and the timings all got so confused with what was going on in this race. We've got an incident there, a car spinning. So another driver risking it on staying on the softs and or the medium sides and losing control of their car. And we're obviously on the inters now. So we've got a lot more grip now. So we can start trying to catch up to some of these cars that are still on the mediums now the only problem with the strategy that we're on here now was because of the huge pit lane loss was another factor that we didn't take into account was that we're going to have to probably put their mediums back on again because you can see as we skip a little bit further on in the race we're coming up to this part here and we've got people on dries and people on mediums now the dry tires are starting to grip up a little bit but they are still very very dangerous this is just chaos going on in front of us you can see intermediate people running got a lot more grip than the dry tires now you can see medi on the right hand side is going to lose control of his car he's going to break too late straight on hits lopez there loses control of his car aqua planes off and he's off into the barrier now we managed to go past a few other cars there we've got devil with a penalty i think we've got a few cars here on intermediates and a few car on medium dry tires and they're obviously struggling we've got a lot more grip we can drive offline they can't drive offline and it's absolute mayhem and craziness going on here. But again, another massive moment there for the Porsche. Losing control at the top of the hill, clearly on the uh, dry tyres and a massive crash there. So a lot of crash footage in this, um, these races that will be in our future crashes of GT7 video, part two. Hopefully that we'll get that out within a few weeks when we've got more footage. But yeah, get back onto this. You can see we've got the Nissan in front of us. Goes wide there, we go up the inside, we're on Inters, we've got the grip on the inside, and you can see he just had no grip. As soon as he went wide, aquaplaned off into the gravel. So again, there was risks, a big risk of staying out on the dry tires, but if you took it sensibly, you probably could have made that work better because we're obviously gonna have to pit again. Once this track dries out, we're gonna have to go back in them pits and lose probably another 45 seconds. So that is a huge amount of time to lose. I really hope that PD, if if you are listening, if you know anyone at PD is listening, if you could dynamically scale the pit stops based on how long the race is. So if it's an hour and a half race, whatever, yeah, keep the pit lanes, you know, full distance. If it's, say, like 30 minute race, maybe scale them to a shorter distance. If it's 20 minutes, even shorter. If it's 40 minutes, make them a bit longer. You know, scale the pit lane loss based on how long your race is. And I think you'd have much more enjoyable strategies and stuff. But at the moment, you see, we're going up the inside here now. And we've got Bray on our right hand side who's took that penalty. And you can see the car in front of us has clearly got a lack of grip, but he is clearly on dry tyres, but he is clearly managing to find some grip because you can look on the telemetry. It's very much in between intermediates and just on the line of dry. So he has got grip, but he's going to run wide there because he's off the line and he's going to get no grip at all. And that is a problem. You go offline, you're going to have no grip at all on the dry tyres. And that's where the intermediates really come into play. So again, for future races on Gran Turismo 7, this is going to be so exciting, especially in these top pit races where it's going to be, a, you know, thinking on your feet. Consta got it exactly right. He obviously knew the pattern and how it worked, and he managed to really gain from that. And he's way off in the lead. However, he is going to have to pit, remember, because he's on the intermediates. Because look further on in the race, we're now on lap six. You can see we're following Bray, staying with him, just staying just outside the slipstream. And the track is almost completely dry at this stage. You can see... Well, it's not completely dry, but it's in a condition that you can definitely get onto the drier tyre. So I decided to risk it here and go into the pits. And I think Concert had already done that as well on this lap as well and pitted the same point because we can go on soft tyres. Now, at this point, the soft tyres can work, but you do have to be careful as we're going to find out very soon because in these conditions, online, there is grip. However, slightly offline on the dry tyres, if you even skim a kerb, you are going to be aquaplaning. And when I mean aquaplaning, you're going to be spinning off out of control with nothing you can do. So again, 
as we come into the braking zone, this is our first lap on the soft tire on the soft tires, and I really I took too many risks straight away. I'm trying to push because we need to make some time up, and you can see we skim the white bit of the um, curb on the left hand side onto the curb, and we totally lose control. And that was pretty much our race over because we've lost so much time in pit stops, and now we're all the way back down the grid. Um, yeah, we did manage to fight up and um, take a few positions back with these soft tires. However, it wasn't enough to get us into a good position, so it was time to go again for another race. Now, for this race, we had a little bit more predictable weather. So in qualifying, we had a little bit more of a static condition, although it was dry, with a little bit of rain that appeared. So you can see in qualifying here, we're starting our last lap right at the end of qualifying, you can see, going over the line, and we managed to get an okay lap in there which puts us up to P7, but you can see the track has just had a bit of rain, but it started to dry out again. Now, one thing I did notice with the Aston Martin was for me, when the track was a little bit of moisture on it, I struggled a lot more, but when it started to get lower on the, you know, lower on the moisture level and a little bit more grip, the Aston Martin seemed to be a much better car for me and I was able to really push it and find a lot more downforce and grip and confidence in the car. And it really did behave a lot better. As you can see here, we're driving quite well. We actually went a really fast first sector. We tied a tiny bit of slipstream, I think, from the BMW in front of us. However, that's gonna hurt us a little bit through the corners because you're gonna get a little bit of loss of aero, but we're far enough back that it's not gonna kill us too much, but we're only gonna gain a slight amount on acceleration. It's not gonna be a huge gain. So overall, it's probably pretty much not that much of a benefit overall. But you can see through here, we lost a bit through there, but then through this left-hand corner, we managed to hook this up quite nicely. Got on the power very early and carried pretty good exit speed all the way into the next sector. You can see it's drying out completely now. You can see on the telemetry, we've got a completely dry track. And this lap is going very well. This is probably one of my stronger laps that I've done in a while in a qualifying session. You can see I'm hooking up the corners, I'm getting to the exit curb, and I'm rotating it really nicely. And we were actually, I felt, I knew I was on a good lap at this stage as we come through to the second sector split. And you're gonna see there, we're quite a way up on our lap. We're three temps up, which should be jumping us up quite a few positions. So onto the straight and the power zone and now into the final corner, which again, this is where the Aston Martin was really strong in dry conditions. You could downshift to second, back up to second, then first, then back up to second, and you should get so much grip from it on throttle. And we actually nailed that final corner and go over the line for us. One, two minutes, 13.2, which amazingly puts me into P2 in this top split GT manufacturers race. So yeah, brilliant qualifying there. P2 now, now we need to see if we can get the points from this race. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of the best races I think we've had in a long time on Gran Turismo. So getting the race started from P2, we're behind Killian. We all know who Killian is. One of the, probably the fastest up there in the top five drivers on the game, in my personal opinion at the moment. We've also, obviously, Mikael Hazel probably a little bit faster, but Killian is getting very close to that kind of level of Mikael Hazel and B-Racer. But yeah, he's up there as one of the best on the game. Um, we're going to have to try and stay with him as much as possible. Now, you're going to see again, the weather is imitating the exact weather pa pattern of qualifying. So we have that little bit of rain coming in, but it's dry at the moment. But you can see the track has started quite wet. So at this stage, this is where I was really struggling with the Aston Martin when there wasn't the full grip available. Now, we're obviously starting on the medium tyres because they, um, they actually lasted the whole race pretty well with the FR cars. Now, the soft tyres were a no-go because the soft tyres would just burn out and yeah, they'd be completely dead. And the hard tires were just a bit too slow. So the medium tires were the tires to go with and actually give you a little bit more grip in these kinds of conditions over the hard tire. However, like I say, in these conditions, I've really struggled. You see Miro behind us in that BMW getting so much more grip at the moment from the corners. And he's actually gonna go for a move up the right-hand side and into the braking zone. We give him enough space on the right-hand side and then into this next one. Now he does cut across us a little bit there, a little bit of contact, but nothing we could do. We had, I expect him to stay a little bit further right, but yeah, we're still in P3, no time loss, no penalty, and it's all okay at this point. Now we've got Bray behind us in the BMW as well, and that BMW clearly liked these conditions where it was a little bit moisture on the track, and he's bump drafting us there, luckily for us, and then into the braking zone. Luckily, he's not gonna be able to send one up the inside here. We've still got the slipstream to Miro. However, we break a little bit late again, struggling for grip not really finding the traction and really having a tough time at the moment with these grip levels but we managed to get okay acceleration and we're going to be going into turn one and still luckily still in that slipstream so we're going to get a bit of a draft down the main straight which is going to help us here now onto the back straight sorry um through a rouge and we should be able to stay pretty close to Miro because the fifth gear acceleration on the aston martin is in the dbr9 it's unbelievably quick. Now you can see the weather coming in. 
Now that weather luckily was like I say following the exact same pattern of qualifying so it's just going to be a little sprinkle of water on the track and it's not really going to affect it too much but it will add a little bit of moisture again which is going to affect how the Aston Martin drives but you can see at this stage we're really struggling we're just trying to stay with Miro there in P2 we're staying in the slipstream but you can see that Bray behind us is looking very very competitive and he's looking very very fast at this stage of the race so we're going to have to try and hold him off as much as possible so we're going to skip a little bit further ahead and you can see that we've actually lost the slipstream to Miro on this lap and we've got Bray right behind us and he's going to be in position possibly to go for a move he's got the slipstream and he has a little look up the inside so we have to give him the space on that right hand side he takes that position and now we're very very cautious through we've got Calston on the right trying to go around the outside so we give him enough space on the kerb however we get better traction in the Aston Martin and we manage to tuck back into the slipstream of Bray so we're going to cover the inside line just in case Calston goes for a move and now we're going to have the slipstream now straight away I knew that I had to get straight back past Bray if possible because I know that the grip is going to come back to my car so we didn't want to get stuck behind this BMW so again we're going to push as much as we can so you can see what i do here is i lift off the throttle just briefly there before i go through the sector just so i get a better slipstream for the top of the hill so it gives me the pull all the way up here and then we get a bit of slipstream now so that we're actually able to pass him a lot easier because if we were doing right up behind him we wouldn't have had that slipstream to pass him into the braking zone so we do that move fairly comfortably in the aston martin with that extra grunt in fifth gear and then into the braking zone we managed to hold him off there and you can see We've managed to get ahead and we can see how close this is at the moment. You can see a little bit of moisture still on the track every now and then. You're seeing a little bit of moisture kicking up. But in general, the track is starting to get a little bit drier now. So that was almost perfect timing to get back into the podium position because this is now where the Aston Martin should start gripping up a little bit for me. And I felt more confident in these type of, type of conditions when it was drying up and it was actually a little bit more grip on the track. So we're going to start pushing and see if we can see if stay as close as possible to that Mercedes that's in front of you. You can see the gap has increased a little bit to the Mercedes. However, you can see that through here, we've got a little bit of rain coming in on that radar. Luckily in this race, that rain was gonna miss most of the track and just have a little bit of moisture sprayed on some of it. So in general, that wasn't gonna affect us too much. You can see at this stage, you can see the track is almost dry now. There's not really many parts of the track that have got any sort of water on it. And this is where I started to get a little bit more confident. You can see I'm starting to get on the throttle a little bit earlier. We're using a little bit more of the track. And you can see the delta much better on this lap. And we should be able to stay in this position. Although we've got Bray right behind us now with the slipstream. So if he gets a good exit off this left-hand corner, although you might have to sometimes lift a little bit when you're in the slipstream through here. So you can see through here, we go flat out. Now Bray goes a little bit wide. He gets a little bit loose on the curb and loses a tiny bit of time. So that holds him off for the next braking zone, which he's not gonna be able to go for a move. And then as we come through here, much more confidence now. You can see how good the Aston Martin is through here. This is where the Aston Martin was really strong in the full dry conditions. We managed to get a little bit of a gap to Bray behind us. And we go over the line with a much more competitive lap time. So way fast, 1.3 seconds quicker than the previous lap. And that really does show you obviously the difference between struggling with grip to when you've got more confidence with the grip. And now we've actually managed to get very close and actually briefly in the slipstream of that Mercedes in front of us, which is gonna help us all the way down this straight. As we see, Calston manages to get ahead of Bray. However, in the braking zone, they're gonna battle a little bit behind us, which is gonna be great for us because that gives me a little bit of a cushion behind and the grip's coming to me now. So I can start pushing and seeing if we can stay with uh, Miro in front of us in the um, BMW. I, I might have called that a Mercedes before, but that's a BMW in front of us. So yeah, if we can stay with that BMW driven by Miro, then we should be able to maybe fighting towards the end. Now, I didn't have a clue what tyre wear was like at this stage. We hadn't done any sort of races all the way through with the medium tyres. So we didn't know which cars are good on tyres, which cars are bad on tyres. All I knew though, is in dry conditions, this Aston Martin with medium tyres just felt like it had a lot of grip, a lot of stability and very nice to drive. So hopefully that will equal a better car on tyres because we did see that the, the BMW every now and then was having moments on the rear and was slightly, you know, a little bit of oversteer every now and then, which isn't going to be good for the tyre wear. You can see Killian out the front, starting to put up. He's already four seconds ahead after three laps. So he's way ahead. However, now that the grip is coming to us, we're starting to get a little bit better. As we look in the mirror and we see Bray have a massive moment in that BMW. Got on the kerb, lost control and straight into the barrier. So he is going to be suffering and out the race pretty much from there. He's going to be suffering with a lot of damage. And we're comfortably clear now. We've got a gap ahead of Calster which is ahead of the slipstream so he's not got a slipstream behind us and now we can just focus 
on seeing if we can catch up to Miro there in P2. You can see we're past the weather. The weather has put a bit more moisture on the track. You can see it must have rained at certain points of the track. You can see on the telemetry there we have got about probably about six, seven percent moisture, something like that. So we are going to struggle a little bit for grip for a lap or so, but that should dry out pretty quick because you can see it is starting to clear up with the weather. Gran Turismo 7's weather system is brilliant. Hopefully we can have a little bit more variety in it and a little bit more unpredictability in it. And, you know, even if it was just a weather report and qualifying and the race had different weather patterns, but we had a weather report, that would be pretty good because at, now that we know that it imitates qualifying, as Miro there in P2 has a massive moment and saves it. But yeah, if we knew that now that we know it imitates the weather of qualifying, it's going to be a little bit easier to predict strategy. However, we obviously don't know what rain will hit further on in the race. So that will still be a factor. But yeah, I think it'd be a bit more better if qualifying and rain were separate weather conditions progressed through them and then the rain in the race was you know you just had the weather report before you went into the race just a little weather report to give you an idea not necessarily 100 percent correct but just a rough idea of what the weather's going to be we see there again miro getting a little bit loose on the curb again on the exit but we're driving pretty solid now you can see another uh, personal best and we're actually increasing the gap to calster behind us so we're going to skip a little bit further ahead now to lap eight you can see the weather has completely cleared up and now this is where you know, like I say, the Aston Martin was so much better in these conditions. Now, tyre wear is definitely a factor. Now, what I'll say, though, is these FR cars with tyre wear are much better than the MR. The MR cars now on this game seem pretty irrelevant. Hopefully that PD can bring in a patch that will bring the MR cars handling into a similar zone as they were before the patch that they did to make the FR cars drive better because the Peugeot and the McLaren used to drive really well. Now... They just seem way off pace compared to these cars so it would be good if they could bring a patch in to really sort them cars out and make them a bit more competitive because we could have one of the best BOPs in group 3 ever because it is looking pretty good at the moment in terms of variety of cars possible to use so now into this really fast flowing section again and you can see we're getting closer to Miro there in P2 we've actually managed to catch up that gap and get a quite a nice draft from the slipstream so we've got a solid gap to Calster behind us we've managed to increase that gap quite solidly um, we're up nearly five seconds clear so in terms of worrying about p4 it's not really a worry at this stage it's all about this battle for p2 and this was an extremely intense battle i can tell you during this race i don't think i've ever been so um, intensely focused on trying to get a position ever on gran turismo this was just 100 percent giving everything we can give to try and get that p2 you can see i'm pushing i'm pushing and pushing we're in that we're in the turbulent air off the car in front which is going to affect us through these corners However, if we, if we could stay close enough for the straight, we can get a nice slipstream because this Aston Martin in fifth gear was insanely strong in the fifth gear. So you can see Killian there, about six seconds ahead. He's only gained about two seconds since lap three. So our pace has been pretty solid here. We're actually driving really, really well. So onto the back straight again, you can see that Miro really pushes it every time onto that curb and gains quite a lot. But we luckily able to just hang with him again in that slipstream. 1.3 seconds is about the slipstream range and you don't pick up much of a slipstream but you get just enough and you can see into the braking zone we're comfortably in now so on the throttle as early as we can we have a little bit moment on the throttle there trying to get the power down but luckily again just about staying within that range to pick up the draft all the way down the next sector so through turn one again trying to get a good exit off here onto the throttle nice and early again the Aston Martin giving us loads of grip on the throttle and now we're working our way all the way up the hill and into the next braking zone. You can see again, we've picked up a nice bit of tow from the car in front and we're now only half a second behind him. But again, trying to, we can get close to him, but then following him through here is very, very difficult. However, that BMW is looking very, very sketchy on some of the curves. The tire wear is obviously affecting the BMW a little bit more than what it is with the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin feels pretty solid to drive with tire wear. So bear that in mind, especially with these medium tires, it felt like the grip was really good with this car. It felt really comfortable to drive. I really enjoyed it. You know, solid on the rear. It didn't didn't feel like it was going to kill you very easily. It felt re very very comfortable. So watching the replay camera, you can see just how close this is. You can see the cars behind us also having a battle there, having a really good battle behind us, and we're just trying to stay as close as we can to that BMW. Again, this is all about staying as close as possible so that we can get the slipstream for the back straight to be in a position to go for an overtake on the main straight. So it's a tactical race. We're going to have to try and see if we can push the car. But at the moment, we just can't find the grip through this section to really get close enough. You can see again, into the braking zone, 
onto the throttle using the full track width. We're pushing as hard as we can from him, but out of this corner, he just had a little bit more confidence, but he was also risking a little bit more with the curb, I felt. So again, skipping a little bit further on, you can see again, we had that slipstream all the way into the braking zone. Now we've only got pretty much two laps to go here. And again, we're doing a very good first sector and we're a lot closer this time. So this is all about staying as close as we can to him and trying not to lose that slipstream so that we can get close to go for a move on the final lap. And we knew that this was gonna be huge points. If we could get that P2, I knew that this would be very, very good points. Possibly my biggest points that I've ever received on Gran Turismo. So again, through left hand corner, Miro getting all over that curb, using as much of the track as he physically can. We're feeling pretty confident at this stage. The car felt really good. I could see that the BMW was struggling for grip. So again, you can see he's using all that track and with the Aston Martin, I feel like I could just keep it in the track really comfortably. So we're just trying to make sure we don't make an error at the moment, making sure that we don't lose too much of that slipstream. However, Miro goes extremely wide then. We've got an opportunity here. So we get very, very close. We have a little look up the right-hand side now. I have a little look up the right-hand side, but I realize that would be really stupid to go for a move there. Back out of it and just try and stay close to him for this next acceleration zone. So again, through here, you can see we struggle a little bit to get the power down there. He again risks so much on that curb, almost onto the green Astro and spinning there. So very lucky he didn't spin on that go. But again, he's got enough of a gap to probably be able to defend into the next braking zone. But this isn't where we're gonna try and overtake him. We need to really get him on the main straight. So again, we're gonna follow him as close as possible. We have a bit of a moment ourselves, we managed to save that. Have a little look up the inside, but too far behind. And now we're just gonna try and get a really good exit from here. And we know the Aston Martin is really, really strong on this exit. So again, getting the power down very, very close now. And now this is where it gets very, very tactical. I knew what he was gonna do. I knew he was gonna let us through here. So I tried to stay to the left, uh, but he breaks really early. I kind of break as well. We're pretty much in no man's time. What I do here is I don't go on the throttle maximum. So I get quite a weak exit on purpose because if I don't let him get too close to my the rear of my car, he won't get as much of a slipstream up the hill. So you can see he's almost lifting a little bit there. And now we're gonna just go flat out because we know that the fifth gear on this Aston Martin is very, very strong. So again, we're gonna to go to the left-hand side of the track and then go straight away back over to the right-hand side of the track and cover the inside line for this corner. We're not gonna move off, this in, off the right-hand side because until he gets past us, we can then go over to the middle of the track. So again, to the middle of the track, into the braking zone. And now what you're gonna witness here it's just absolute brilliant driving. Uh, I'm, I have to say, this was so respectful. Side by side, all the way through the corners. Look how close the cars are, almost touching there. Now we've got the inside line into the next corner. He's got the outside line, but he's further ahead. So we take that inside line. We manage to get side by side with him again. Onto the power as early as we can. Still side by side. We give this position up now because we've got the outside for this corner. It's very difficult to go around the outside of that. But now we've got a better exit from the corner than he has. We're going to have a little look up the right-hand side, then back to the left-hand side, just trying to put some pressure on him. And unfortunately, we didn't get that position. So that was almost up into P2 on the final lap. But we're not going to give up there. We know that that BMW was looking very sketchy on the final two laps before this. So if we can just keep pushing now, we might be able to push him into a mistake. So again, through here, on the throttle, staying as close as we can to Miro, trying to just put him under pressure, see if he makes a mistake. He has a little moment again on the curb there and then into this right-hand corner on the throttle as early as we can. This is where the BMW is really strong, but he always risks it on the curb. And again, you're gonna see, he goes really aggressive, he loses control of it, he's on the green Astro, has a massive moment, manages to save it, but he's gonna lose all momentum now. So we're now gonna be able to go for the overtake. On the right-hand side, can we go around the outside? We've got the momentum, he squeezes us out to the right-hand side, but that gives us the line into the apex, and we take that perfectly. He runs a little bit wide there, he's gonna pick up a penalty for that probably as we get into the braking zone and again he really tries to attack the corner here so again we get onto the curb he loses control on the curb and just about manages to save it without spinning you can see in the bottom hand corner for the replay he manages to take home p3 but we go over the line with our best ever result i'd say there we lost so much time on the last lap i think we lost like three seconds to killian on the last lap and a half so massive amount of time lost at the end but overall extremely happy with that race a p2 in slot two and extremely really good points you're going to see now we come away with 423 points that is my biggest ever points on gran turismo ever whether gt sport or gt7 so extremely happy with that i hope you enjoyed that video if you did give it a thumbs up remember we do stream these races live as well so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and i'll see you all for more content thanks again for watching everyone